Well, hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to the shop. Today, I got kind of a out of the blue video here. We're gonna try to replace the batteries in this guy. This is a Sphero 2. So this is just a, it's a remote control ball. You can control it with um, the Bluetooth connection from your cell phone. And uh, it's kind of fun and cool to play with, but I, got, I picked it up used, it was relatively cheap, and it worked for a while, but it won't hold a charge anymore, so the batteries are dead. I mean, that's what it comes down to. The real challenge is gonna be getting this thing open. So there's no real easy way to open these. They're not designed um, to come apart, really. They're not, you're not supposed to be able to replace the batteries. And if you contact the company, they tell you it's done. And I'm not willing to trash it. Um, I figured the batteries were very inexpensive. So I thought, let's see if we can get this apart and then I probably epoxy it back together. I don't know, that may backfire. I don't know, because <laughs> what could happen is inside there is the the motor is basically like independent and it rolls around inside there so that as the, the little drive guy moves, it has to be able to move freely in there. So if I go to epoxy it, I might just epoxy the, the motor in place, which would be, which would be bad. Um, so I don't know, we'll see what happens once I get it open. I mean, first things first, right? We gotta get in there. I figure the worst thing I'll do is break it and uh, it's pretty much useless as is, so I'm not out much. Um, I'm going to try to um, put this in my vise. See if we can get a little more pressure on it. So these are just foam pads, and this is my pretty standard shop vise here. It's in there pretty good. I don't want to remove a bunch of materials. Maybe this guy, a little scroll saw. That's pretty small. Ooh, that's really biting in there though. So let's just do real gentle. I mean, you know, I could bust out a Dremel, but I'm afraid if I do a Dremel, I'll cause damage to the, to what's inside there. Cause it's kind of pretty, pretty tight fitting. So let's just uh, take it slow, huh? if we remove too much material with too thick of a saw, when we go to glue this back together, it's no longer going to be round. Um, I mean, if it's a little bit less than round, I don't, I don't think that's going to be a factor, but we can't make it too small because then you know, all the stuff inside won't fit anymore. Alright, now we're making progress. Oop, there she is. There we go. So there's one side. There's the other side. Ah. And here's what we're working with. So it's got wireless charging and that's what this is down here. So it sits inside the ball like this. And these little wheels make contact with the sides of the ball. This keeps pressure, this is spring-loaded, up against the ball on the top so that it is able to have traction on the ball. So that's, that's pretty much what's going on. The battery is underneath this circuit board. So I'm probably gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to take all this off, here's the antenna, and then get, get to the battery underneath there. I watched a video of a guy going at it from the bottom, <laughs> but, um, that looked way more complicated than I think would be ideal. So I think we're gonna go, we're gonna go in from the top here and uh, take all this off and then we'll be able to get to the batteries down in there. You can see there's one on this side and one on this side. Uh, maybe you qu can't see that, but I know that's where they are. So um, that's what we're gonna do next. I'll kind of get this cleaned up and we'll do that. So this is the antenna. We gotta be, gotta be careful with that. And uh, I think this is just going to pull out of here. Yep, there we go. Just sits in there. So you can see this just sits down in that hole. There's nothing, no screwing, no screws, no 
nothing holding it in, just the pressure of it pushing up against the other side of the ball. So I'll set that up there. Next, we got to take the, uh, I mean, I guess this is a motherboard, um, the circuit board off, and there, there are two small Phillips screws. So let me get my Phillips bit here. So that's a one if you're looking at Phillips sizes. That's definitely the right fit. I think this is just going to pop off. Now there's some pins here and here that make contact down in some uh, contacts down in there. So I think we just got to make sure we pull gently straight out. Yep. And those will come loose. So you can see for putting it back together, there is an orientation that's going to matter here. Um, these pins go in here, but if you look, here's what's going to help us know so we don't have to worry about marking it or anything. It has two pins on this side and four pins on this side that line up with those two and those four. So pretty easy to remember how that's going to go back in. Set that aside. Now we got to get this plastic spacer off of there and it it is held in if you look right here these little clips those just go in I'm just gonna push them in with my fingernails I think yep that popped that side up there we go so those there's the clips you can see those go in like that and uh, they get kind of clipped around these little brackets just a little bit, but not too much. And here's, oh my gosh, those are the batteries. See how bloated those are? Those are definitely no longer any good. So, um, I'll have to take those out and let's double check. So here's the ones I purchased. I don't know if that's going to fit in there. Hmm. Well, I may have to order some different batteries. I'm not sure. How oh, I managed to order the wrong size. I'll have to look into that. But I can continue taking these batteries out for now. So I think these are just held in. Oh. Just literally by pressure. Alright, so let's get this one. You can see if we look at this clear plastic part right here. This thing needs to come off of there because it's holding in whatever's going on down there that those wires are attached to. And if you look right here, there's a little bit of that plastic that goes down and boop, it clips right there. You can get in there right here. We're going to try to get that off of there with a straight pin, um, but I don't see any reason why I can't clip these batteries off at this point so that they're not in the way. So I'm going to do that. There's that. Probably should keep them longer because I might need enough to solder to. Hoping I don't have to do that. All right. Now be aware these are rather dangerous at this point because they're so bloated. Um, if you pierce them, I guess they can start on fire, which would probably not be good. So we're going to set those aside safely for now. And we'll find a way to safely dispose of those later. But at least now they're out of the way so that I can work in here you can get down to that little clip through this hole right here so I'm just gonna try to get this pin on the top of it and see if I can work it over just enough to get it to come out that's actually enough I just need to pull it up there we go so there you can see that clip so all I did is I put the pin along the side of it and pried it back a little bit and then lifted it straight up and it came out of there. So if, you may have to get your pin on top of it, but it wasn't too hard to get out of the way. So anyway, there's that. Don't lose it. Now I can get this connector out of there. And you're going to want to note where everything is at. So you got black and blue here, white and red there, and it came out this way.
so I had to order a different set of batteries because the batteries that I ordered were too big even though the numbers seemed to match but the little e electronic control stuff up here at the top was uh, so big that it wouldn't fit inside the the guy here so um, I found another set to try and these actually these measurements are a little bit different than the originals here's the here's the original batteries that are all bloated and pillowy the size is almost an exact match and it has the same voltage 3.7 volts 3.7 volts this one's only uh, 350 milliamp hours this one's 380 so a little bit a little bit better battery actually um, so I'll include the link to these uh, down below just in case you're wondering which ones are gonna work um, and I've thought about it a little bit and I think um, rather than try to get these little clips out of here and then reuse this I think I'm just gonna actually solder these tiny little wires together I think I'll just have better luck doing that so um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip all these little guys and then cut and strip these and then I will solder them together. Now if you have a really delicate wire stripper, you could probably use that, but I don't think mine is anywhere near small enough to... No, so I'm just going to have to kind of... There we go. Strip those with my fingers. Gotta make sure we keep things together. And the black and blue were wired up to the same. So we'll cut these off on this one. I've already soldered one to the plug here that's gonna sit inside here. I just cut the wires and I've already tinned these two and then I'm gonna cut these off on this one I'll tin those and then I'll solder them together and in an ideal world I would probably use some like dielectric grease and some shrink tubing but I don't have shrink tubing that's small enough to fit these wires so I'm just gonna use um, I'm just gonna use some electrical tape and I think that'll that'll be good enough as far as length goes I guess I'm gonna go in about that neighborhood so I'm gonna tin these and I'll do one at a time I don't want to risk hitting that battery with my soldering iron. That's one. Now please don't please don't judge my soldering abilities. I am not the best at soldering. I am serviceable. Um, or my solders are serviceable. So please, if you don't know how to solder, don't learn from me. Go learn from somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, or is at least go learn from somebody that's better at it. These hooked up to the bracket here, black to black of course, and then red to blue on this side. I already did the other side that was red and white, so should be good there. So my solder of choice here is uh, a lead-free solder, um, and it's a rosin core, so I don't have to use any type of flux or anything like that flux rosin core. It's a pretty small gauge, but anyway, it works. So good to go there. I'm going to go ahead and tape this one up. And like I said, I think this would ideally be, you'd have some shrink tubing here, but I don't have shrink tubing that's small enough, so tape it as. So now it's time to start trying to put this thing back together. And I gotta get all this oriented bit and put back in here. Now, the way this harness sits in there, the black and blue wire are closest to me and they sit, you know, right here. So I gotta try to get it set in that way. It's sitting the way it's supposed to. Now it's got this little clip that sits back on top of there. Let's see if we can get that in the way it's supposed to be. That looks good. Now the trick will be getting all these wires back in there, especially with that big honking tape that I did. So now all we've got to do is get this on here, this little um, spacer guy. 
cleanly and it looks I glued one of those felt pads came off so I put that back on they're both on there pretty well uh, just use a little bit of like tacky no what did I use Elmer's glue wall so just you know typical glue nothing typical glue nothing fancy um, but this this is not sitting very flat which we're gonna have to address because these prongs that go down in here need to make really good contact so we don't really want this on top of the battery putting pressure on it when we screw things down it might be a bit of a pickle so let's give this a go now at this point I guess there's a chance that there's a charge in that battery so we got to be pretty careful about putting things back on making sure that we don't um, cross anything metal wise after we make this connection so those line up if you look there's four pins here and two pins here the two pins line up with that obviously and the four pins line up with that so it has an orientation I don't think you could put it on the wrong way it wouldn't allow you to make the contacts it wouldn't even push in so it should be pretty simple to line everything up and push it down it looks like there's a little bit of breathing room inside there I don't think I'm putting any pressure on the batteries or anything so now it's time to put the screws back in and like I said you got to be careful placing these in there you don't want to um, you don't want to short anything cross anything I don't I don't know that there's power on those batteries from the factory but there's probably some Okay. Let's see if we can get any power. So here's the charging cradle, and um, it's weighted on the bottom, but it also here's the wireless charging coil. And so hopefully, when we set this on here, we should get some light. So, oh, look at that. Don't even get close to it, and it starts lighting up. Good. All right, that means we have power. That means things are connected and good. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to charge that like that. We're going to we're going to finish putting this together. Now, when I cut this thing open, these edges are a little dirty, a little bit get that out of the way. A little bit messy here. So I think I'm going to I think I'm going to clean this up just a little bit with a little bit of sandpaper. Right, so this is just 220 and we're just going to That feels pretty good. I don't want to take much off. I still want the surfaces to mate really well. So I think that's probably good. Now, time for the glue up. So I'm going to clean out inside here a little bit. Make sure there's nothing in here. Because once we glue this back together, uh, you know, it's not, not going to come back apart very easily, I don't think. Um, I have seen people that bought new... Um, they'll use like a clear Christmas ornament that you can fill, you know, like a plastic one. There's a there's some out there that are, I guess, really close to the right size, so they just use those um, instead of using reusing this shell. But they're, these shells are really thick and durable, um, so I like the polycarbonate here. So I think I'm just going to stick with these. Uh, as far as putting things back together, you could use an epoxy um, if you had like a quicker set epoxy so that you didn't have to hold this forever. Or you could use a slower set one and then you'd have to build some kind of clamp or jig or something um, probably to hold these sides together equally while it dried. Um, or you could use, I mean I saw a guy use white electrical tape um, or white duct tape and then obviously it's not a permanent thing. You could peel the tape off but I also would imagine that it doesn't stay on as well. Um, if you're going to use like the silicone little cover thing for it then maybe the tape wouldn't be such a big issue but I don't... Um, I don't really trust my boys with it being taped closed. I'm pretty taped closed. I'm pretty sure they would um, have that open and create all kinds of problems. So um, we're just going to see how well this closes up. So if you remember, I made marks so that I could find where I cut it open from, and it looks like 
things go together pretty well here. Not real sure what's going on here. Got some debris in the way or something. Well, you can see there's a gap here big enough that you could actually put something in there, but I think we're just gonna have to rely on the glue to fill that. So my glue of choice is gonna be this stuff. So this is a um, Starbond flexible, medium thick, high performance cyanoacrylate instant adhesive. Um, all it is is CA glue. Um, but supposedly this is formulated to be a little bit flexible when dry, which I think in this application is gonna be a good thing. Um, I have not really used this much yet, um, but I think it's gonna work out pretty well. So we're gonna give it a shot. I don't think you'd wanna use regular CA glue. I guess you could, but um, regular, CA, regular CA glue is not very flexible. As soon as you put much flex to it, it usually cracks and begins to um, give away because it just really doesn't have any flexibility. So this supposedly has a little bit. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot here. So the trick is gonna be, we gotta get this guy in here. And we gotta put the spacer guy back on. Now let's think about how he sat. He went like this. Watch out for the antenna there. Yep, and that just sits in there like that. Nice, that seems to be good enough. And then we put the top on, line up our spots. And then, there we go. Now the trick is gonna be not getting any glue inside, because we don't wanna glue the, uh, the actual insides down. That would um, pretty much negate this whole thing. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to work on this, the edge, kind of not straight on top with hopes that things won't drip in there. Now I don't expect this to be waterproof after doing this. Uh, I don't know that I would trust it to be waterproof, so don't go put, dumping it in a puddle after you do this. Let's give it a little while to dry. It seems to be together. I don't think we glued anything on together inside. Sounds like it'll still move around in there. And also because of the way I placed it, I don't think even if a little bit ran inside there, I think we'd be okay. Um, so anyway, I'm going to give this a little while to fully cure, and then we'll come back and see if we can get a good charge on it and all that fun stuff. So back in a bit. All right, so I've had this guy in the charger for a while, and the glue job seems adequate. I mean, it's not perfect. It's a little bit, you can see it, it's a little bit not perfectly round right in here. Um, so I didn't get it quite lined up, but it's close. And I could use some debonder and actually open this back up um, and, and re-glue it. But I, I think we're just going to see how well it does. It's not so bad that it's going to really mess it up. It's still going to work just fine to play with it. Uh, and then, you know, in the future, if I have to get in there again, I can always use the debonder and re-glue it. So, um Anyway, we're gonna see if it'll connect and work. So I just have this little tray here in case it connects and decides to go all crazy. Um, it'll stay on the bench for me. But um, so here I have the phone that I tend to use to control it and we'll see how it goes. Hello. I wonder if I broke one of the connections. Oh, there we go. Hello. Oh, okay. Let's see what happens. Probably have to go connect him on Bluetooth. Well, look at that. Good to go. Wouldn't even power on before. So, cool. Looks like that was a success. So, anyway, if you have one of these guys and it's not working because the batteries are all nasty, um, it looks like it's totally doable to fix it. And, I mean, this is... I'm squeezing that fairly hard, and it's... I think it's going to be solid. I mean, if it busts open, I can always re-glue it. Um, and tape it if I need to, or I can put it in that little silicone sleeve thing that it has, um, and that would probably help um, brace it too. But I'm actually, I'm not worried about this breaking. I think this is going to be just fine. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful, and uh, <laughs> hopefully you, uh, I don't know, you and or your kids 
enjoy your uh, Sphero that has come back to life. So uh, thanks a bunch. Have a good one.